the, the loader system fully active was basically very high energy because it required energy to do what it did. Whereas the Williams system, which was semi-active, still had passive springs and thus some compliance, like a conventional system. But when it met a bump on the road or it was deflected or something like that, the system basically superimposed on top of the passive system an ability to maintain a particular aero attitude. And that, of course, is what it was all about. It was all about aero and maintaining a ride height level that was consistent throughout the lap. And, and I guess, you know, like all these things, that were game changers, were revolutionary in Formula One history. It was a confluence of different aspects. And not only were Williams focused on this active system and finally making it work uh, in a race situation reliably and consistently, but on top of that, the aero system that the active or the semi-active system was going to reward was an aero system devised by Adrian Newey, nobody better of course and and an fw14a was a case study in adrian coming to williams which was all about functionality stiffness rigidity reliability drivability adrian coming into that world of patrick head and packaging it repackaging everything so tight that, that you could barely breathe and and the boys i remember in early in 90 well over the winter of 90 and into 91 the boys were were just staggered by the uh, margins to which Adrian was designing lots of lots of bodywork and fittings on the car. And it was an incredibly, the first half of 91 was an incredibly hard period, full of, full of all-nighters, of the boys getting a piece sent out from England at the last minute. We'd be in Brazil or something like that, and it would arrive, and it wouldn't quite fit. And it wasn't just a question of shaping it so that it would fit it was a question of redoing the whole thing it was you know the margins were that tight and I'm sure it's the same with with Adrian today although of course the systems that allow the mechanics to adjust and to adapt those parts are much more refined uh, and much more uh, straightforward but in those days I mean I remember in Brazil it was it was one of the hardest Grand Prix we ever had 91 with a 14a in terms of all-nighters and the work the boys put in I remember Bob Davis um it just where's Bob when we Monday morning after the race he was still asleep in his room and it's very unusual for a mechanic you know to miss the bus that takes him to the airport to get him back to England but there he was asleep and um, and that's when of course um, Colin Watts came up with the all-time great quote which is that if you can do the buttons up on your shirt on a Monday morning you haven't been working hard enough in other words you should have so many calluses on your hand that that uh, doing up the buttons is impossible. And that's what 14A was really all about in my mind. It was just, it was a beautiful car. And you know, Adrian just basically streamlined everything that he possibly could, filled in every gap. And meanwhile, Patrick was, Patrick's very fertile brain was working on a lot of uh, developments that were taking place with Renault. And we'll talk about those in a minute. But 14B was, was a program that was running in effect throughout 91 as a test car driven by Mark Blundell. And it just gradually got more and more reliable. Mark did a really good job uh, in that car, in the active car, and then Damon took it over at the end of 91. And, uh, and the uh, two race drivers didn't get to sit in it, as far as I remember, until about Estoril, back end of 91. And we had two we had two cars there. I remember we had two cars at Estoril back end of ninety one, which I thought was very impressive, two active cars. And that's when Ricardo and Nigel first really drove them. And I think Ricardo was a bit amused because he'd really liked the 14A. And I think the 14B felt completely different to him. Whereas Nigel, despite all those dramas he'd had at Lotus, whereas Nigel um, was just came in with a smile on his face. He just loved it from the minute he got in the car. He knew he could feel that there was some world out there of additional grip, providing that he kept the throttle in at a certain place where normally you'd want to lift off. Uh, suddenly the car just became a different racing car, which is what it was all about, I think. Uh, it was just that commitment factor. And, and, and I think it's fair to say that the 14B didn't give the drivers 
a feeling of confidence going into the corner, the confidence feeling was only there mid-corner if you took that step to get to it. And I think that's where Nigel did such a good job with the 14B. And it wasn't just a bravery thing. It was a touch and feel thing, which is what Nigel had always been all about. Of course, it took a commitment from him, but it also was about feeling the back end, what he could do with the car and how he could use it and how, how well he could drive it. Um, I think the other point that needs to be made, and I won't go into too much detail because I don't want this, you know, this video will come forever, but uh, we can do a much longer one later on probably. But the only thing I'd say about the 14B active system was that because Paddy Lowe and his team, Steve Wise and others, spent so much time on electronics and computers and basically designing and creating a whole new world out there, which Formula One still enjoys, because suddenly we had hydraulics and computers and sensors that worked, a whole lot of other things immediately happened as a result of of, uh, of basically running the hydraulics for the for the active ride, and they would be in no particular order: traction control, ABS braking, power steering, and um, active differentials. And, and a lot of those got banned, of course, in the famous Hockenheim Agreement of '93, when Bernie sort of had this one one sheet of A4 with I think it was 15 bullet points on it, and went round just got all the team principles to sign up, basically banning technology in Formula One forevermore, but but active diffs managed to scrape through, and they're still on cars today, modern Formula One cars, current Formula One cars have the active diff system that was generated by the 14B.